Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes, the next plane 11. For this flight I am going from Ericsson Air Force Base in Alaska to King Salmon in Alaska and that is P-A-S-Y to P-A-K-N, so basically along the Aleutian Islands. And I'm going to be flying an F-A-18 and originally I had slated uh, a B-1B for this flight but a new B-1B got released. The, the original one I had was basically from X-Plane 10. It wasn't too bad but uh, it wasn't as good as the new one that's been released by Dom Henry. Both are freeware. And so this new freeware B1B appeared and I test flew it and it's really nice and I want to fly it but it handles really badly under 200 knots especially when I'm trying to land. So wings out, uh, a little bit of flaps down and it flies like a brick. Um, it's So there's something weird with it. I could fly it and I could try and land it uh, it'd be tough though and since at Mach 1.25 which is the maximum speed for the B1B uh, the B1A was the one that could fly really fast B1B was a little bit stealthier um, but at the maximum speed of the B1B this flight that I'm going to do would take two hours so I'd be a little bit tired at the end of it since I'm not using autopilot and so I was going like maybe I'll save it for a shorter flight and get something that could go a little bit faster and the F-18 is capable of Mach 1.7 so I decided that it would be a better choice for this flight and I'll save the B1-B4 flight where I'll be sure to be fresher on landing so I can compensate for any weirdness about the aerodynamics and maybe there'll be a patch released in the meantime that will fix the problem so we'll see about that uh, I'll also do more test flights with the B1B because I like the B1B. It's probably, it's like one of my top two favorite planes in terms of looks. The Concorde being the other one. So, yeah. Anyway, so here we are. This is the Kolimata FA-18. And it looks like that from the outside. Uh, forgive the drop tanks. That's not the fault of the plane maker. Uh, that is my fault because I created this uh, texture. Well, I adapted this texture from a different uh, NASA, which got um, F-18 livery. So, in doing so, I forgot, or at least I didn't change the textures of the drop tanks. So, forgive me for that, but I did want to use the NASA livery for this. And, yeah, uh, I actually have track IR now. So, if we go in here, I can activate track IR and look around uh, not a big deal in here compared to like in DCS world or anything but that's something and of course during these flights I normally stick in the outside view anyway so let me just stop the track IR business and we will go to the outside view and let's get started with the Apollo 13 audio which we traditionally listen to during these flights There we go. They're gonna take you by Hilo to Samoa. You'll spend the night. Alright. So they're talking about their plans when they get back. And here we go. It's a little bit wobbly. Whoa. As you were in it, you're gonna spend the night on a ship. Hilo to Samoa, directly to Ellie. Feels a little bit heavy, but okay. That's enough after rumor. And up we go. Okay, let me check my map. We are going in the right direction, so good start. Okay. 
Please, I'm sorry, Fred. Uh, we're just not reading you right now. Uh, maybe we'll have to wait a little bit. Let's see, yep. we can't. We already can't see the island that we took off from. Oh well. Now let's try it now. If you can speak up, the background noise has gone down a little bit. Hey, how do you read now? A little better. Uh, we really can't hear him very well. It's always a judgment call about what I include from the tapes because a lot of it is tough to hear. Basically, during this phase of the mission, they kept the... You say the coloration of the thrusters appears they haven't been fired on quads one and four. They kept the audio open the whole time. So you can hear mumbling in the cabins and stuff like that. They are on their way back from the moon. In this case, it's just a bad connection that they've got right now. I wonder about that seam in the clouds that happens sometimes. Check in the cockpit for a little bit. Want to make sure that we're at max thrust and, uh, without Brendan, after burning. The, uh, a little bit degraded, more background noise because uh, we're getting out of attitude a little bit there. Okay, I think I can just accelerate up maybe. Say, Fred, did you, uh, I don't know how bad the fuel consumption is going to be if I start the afterburners now. S4B impact. It's been a long time since I flew this. Well, I can't use the AP.
of seismic detected major seismic activity on all long period channels. And this was, this activity was detected for four hours afterwards. Wow, the S4B impact caused seismic activity for four hours. I just want those cloud seams to stop. This is Apollo Control in 85 hours, 11 minutes. Uh, Capcom Jack Lausman has been keeping up a fairly steady stream of conversation with Fred Hayes, who has the watch aboard the lunar module. Uh, Commander Jim Lovell and Command Module Pilot Jack Swigert have been in a scheduled five-hour rest period. Uh, Once the external tanks hours, are done, I'll jettison them. Got to push to jettison uh, button. Of course, I've got the F-18 in. Oops, I have to click in here to unfreeze it. Um, I've got the F-18 in DCS world, so I know the cockpit looks somewhat different than this. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Though that is the F A eighteen C, this is F A eighteen F, so I'm reading your friend and can't got a lot really of tell. Noise, Okay, inching towards the speed of sound. There we go, Mach 1. Uh, steadily climb up. Get to Mach 1.7. Honestly, the external tanks probably should be causing more drag than they seem to be. So thanks to switching to this plane, we should get to our destination in about an hour, so that's good, and that's what I always intend. A little bit over an hour. Okay, Fred, and uh, when you select, when you swap out the uh, primary cartridge, don't reselect primary. Stay on secondary until we use the secondary up. Over. Well, it looks like uh, our external tanks will be hanging out for a little while. Jeez, all those lines on the clouds. Why? Why must it be this way? Well, this angle is okay. Okay, we're going a little bit fast here. Oxide, which had been reading 14 uh, millimeters Oops. Of mercury. I don't know why it freezes itself when I turn to the, at the present time and, uh, 3D cockpit to go down now. Maybe there. it has something to do with track IR? I don't know. And the, uh, 
Uh, let's just keep the afterburner okay, on. Afterburner seems to be an on off thing. Okay, and the earth so. LPD was uh, 8 degrees. Did you, just, did you say 8 degrees, Fred? That burn. Okay. We're approaching the Rat Islands. That's what they're called, apparently. But there's sufficient cloud cover that I don't think we're going to get a great sight of them. Should test what the max speed with drop tanks are in DCS world for this. Should be interesting. Well, even in the cockpit we've got cloud seams. But uh, not as early, obvious in here. We are over an island. We passed one. Let's see. Okay, Jim. Oh, uh, there it is. That. Let me see if I can find a name for it. Was Kiska Island. So obviously if somebody understands why I get these lines in the clouds, it's usually in the cloud cover, uh, exclusively in the cloud cover. 
and sometimes the lines appear. There must be some layer or something going on. Well, let's see in the cockpit whether the external tanks are done. At the present time, Apollo 13 is almost 197,899 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed of 3,740 feet per second with respect to Earth. Aquarius, in a, comparing our initial estimates of uh, water usage and uh, electrical power usage, it appears that uh, we're right on the money on our water usage, and we're using a little less uh, amperage than we had originally expected in our first analysis. So we're either uh, right on the money or just a little bit ahead of the game. So we're passing the Rat Islands now, and next up is the Andreanov Islands. And it's in the Andreanov Islands that I originally had my destination for the previous flight. One reason this flight is longer is because I made the previous, previous flight shorter. So originally when I planned for the B-1B on this flight, it was a shorter flight and would have been a little over an hour. Try and sneak a little bit higher for efficiency. We have a group working on the entry. So now and when we're going to uh, activate the CSM. Yeah. yeah, let's get rid of the drop tanks. We have a group working on the CSM system. Well, it sounded like they went. And they have. A few hours, uh, All right. Later on tomorrow, tomorrow we see it. We're going to uh, go to some base configuration on the CSM. Seems like we are a little bit liftier, that's for sure. So we're going up much faster after dropping them. Now we're going down really fast. That's not good. Aquarius, are you reading Houston? Okay, Jim, I hear you talking, but I can't tell what you're saying because you're way down in the background noise. Okay, can you hear? Let's see, what can oh, I do? Yes, that's that's on auto. What if I turn the, it off? Uh, no, that doesn't help the seams. Some angles are fine. But it looks like I'll be in the cockpit more often in this flight after all. Whoa, what the heck just made that streak? <laughs> That is some sort of flyer right there. I don't know what that could be. Yeah, I think it might be. Oops. I always have to click in here nowadays. More pleasant in here than out there. Nope, we're losing speed. We need to level out here. Okay, I heard you 
say something about using the high com camera in Aquarius. Stowage. What do we leave behind in Aquarius uh, when we uh, fall back and do Odyssey? Is that right? Now we changed our bar barometric yeah, pressure for too. to match what we've got in the upper left. That's close enough. This is Apollo Control at 86 hours, 9 minutes. Communications continue to be rather noisy, uh, due in part to the fact that the lunar module has drifted somewhat out of its passive thermal control attitude, and we don't have the uh, best angle on the antennas for reception from the lunar module. Uh, during that last series of conversations with Jim Lovell, uh, Capcom Jack Lausma advised him of the status of all consumables on the spacecraft. Uh, he reported that uh, the consumables were either ahead of the predicted values or at least uh, right on them. And Lovell replied that uh, that is encouraging. Lovell also oh, asked that, uh, there. here on the ground we look at the Storage Interesting in color. The module and lunar module, uh, particularly uh, with an eye to what things can be left behind. Let me check what that is. Module when the crew moves back into the Tanaga Island. Earth entry. Tim, uh, earlier in the evening, uh, we thought there was a misunderstanding about the amount of potable water you can drink, uh, but uh, we wanted to advise you that uh, you can drink as much water as you want to. There's 38 pounds in the portable tank and that's about all you'll need. And the There's something weird up in front yes, there. You, uh, drink as much uh, fruit juice as you want to. Yeah, Jim, earlier in the evening, uh, Fredo reported uh, some venting out of window number one that we had module. Yep, no, that one. seems like too steep an angle. Okay, enough of these things. I'll go back into the cockpit. I mean, geez. It's been tough to trim this right. Last time I flew it, I flew with the autopilot, so... Obviously not in this series, but...
Okay, Jim, uh, once again, I hear you talking back there, but I can only pick out a few words. Uh, maybe we'll have a better time. Aquarius, we're trying to improve our communications. Uh, could you turn the biomed off and uh, give us a voice check, please? Well, now it's going up at a more gradual rate. Hopefully, we can eventually stabilize. It'll wiggle about up and down a bit. Okay, Jim, that seemed to be better. How you doing there, Aquarius? We're currently uh, okay, south of a dock uh, island. Two guys available there, and you could uh, construct one of these lithium hydroxide rigs. Uh, uh, whoops, sorry. Like to, uh, it's that one together, right there. And, uh, we'll go through the steps together. That is the dock island. Oh, there's a uh, scenery problem at Akka Airport. Well, that had been my original destination for the previous flight. I guess it's a good thing that I did not, after all, attempt to land there. So the island we're over now is Atka Island, our destination, and where apparently the airport scenery is messed up. I don't think that's having any effect on the clouds, but... Uh, and he 
face suggested that uh, this venting uh, was probably disturbing the ETC attitude of the spacecraft. Looks like you're a little bit outside the corner. Uh, we're looking at a uh, seven foot per second mid course at uh, 104 hours. We are going to come up with a uh, entry interface minus eight pad to use in the event of a lost comm situation. can sort of see Alan from here. situation uh, for the burns uh, haven't uh, made their final conclusions yet but in the interim period we want to come up with something that you can use in the event that you lose calm okay we copied uh, 10 degrees was that earth or moon Jim Okay, Earth, 10 degrees, thank you. Uh, Jim Lovell continuing to report the uh, relative positions of the Earth and the Moon as they rotate by his LEM window. Uh, he's comparing the position with a grid marked on the lunar module window, the landing point designator, which is a calibrated grid. And by noting the shift in the uh, position of both the Earth and the Moon as the uh, spacecraft rotates, we're able to get at least a rough idea of how much the uh, spacecraft attitude is deviating from the original passive thermal control attitude. Uh, the combined CSM-LEM uh, stack is rotating at a rate of about uh, one revolution every 11 minutes at this time. Uh, repeating again, both Lovell and Fred Hayes uh, have reported seeing particles coming from the area of the service module, uh, apparently uh, venting. Uh, Fred Hayes was asked at the time he reported it if he felt it was uh, uh, continued venting from the uh, original event, which uh, lost the uh, power and uh, oxygen from the service module or a new event. Uh, he did not know. Uh, a short while ago, Jim Lovell reported seeing a similar phenomenon. He described it as small particles coming out of uh, what appeared coming out of the uh, spacecraft uh, from what appeared to be the service module said they were coming out with some force and uh, mentioned that uh, this was probably disturbing the passive thermal control attitude. Uh, we're watching this with uh, some interest in mission control, but uh, with no concern at this point. Uh, the primary concern, as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is with what effect it would have on the passive So we are past the Andreanov Islands. Is, is not a significant problem. Uh, Head up the rest of the Aleutian Islands. Attitude is relatively small. Uh, the flight dynamics officer has also reported that uh, there is relatively little effect on the uh, position of the vehicle as reflected in the track, ground tracking of the spacecraft, which would lead us to believe that the uh, venting is relatively small. Nope, lost the low altitude. Keep trying to fidget uh, with it. It's going 
I think, no, well, okay, I was about to say the cloud seams were gone, but not quite. Seemed fewer of them though. Got some strange shadows here. Okay, Jim. 
Jim, so we want to get the y-axis of the spacecraft parallel to the Terminator by putting the points of the crescent on the y-axis. Seems like the wind's against us a bit. Yeah. Not too strong, though. Somewhere to our right is Umnuk Island. Okay, Jim, after you get that orientation, we come in a little more steeply. We perform a and then up ahead is Unalaska Island. A 400 plus 5 on the theta. If the egg's ball is up at this time, the egg's ball will go to zero, zero, Can't really zero. see a whole lot right now. Well, certainly less cloud seems around here now. Hmm. Interesting. There again, I mean, what is that that looks like some sort of rocket launch going up? <laughs> Maybe it's an X-15, I don't know. There are X-15s, I've 
didn't realize I was allowing them to be AI planes, but I don't know what else makes a trajectory like that or the fast wobbly one we saw before. speed this thing. Oh, we see some island indications. That's on Alaska Island. I don't know if it's Unalaska Island, Unalaska Island, or how else to pronounce it. I get the feeling that the afterburner fuel consumption should be higher on this. I'm not 100% sure about that. Next major island is Unamak Island, and then it's just the Alaskan Peninsula after that. And we go up the peninsula to King Salmon. Things are finally looking a little bit better. Even the shadow on the vertical stabilizer seems to be less obnoxious.
wondered if you'd remember that. By golly, you did. Everybody wondered if he'd remember. Apparently, a checklist thing from Apollo 8. And he did. So this batch of uh, snow right here is part of Unamak Island. Seems to have a lot of glaciers on it. Oh, sorry, it looks like it says encoding overloaded and I'm also going down really fast. I was looking at a map there. But that does entail clicking outside the window. Outside the game, I mean.
the conversation which we just had with Jim Lovell uh, related to a uh, what, what is called a uh, pad data uh, for entry interface minus eight hours. This is a more or less routine bit of information which is so we're about 300 nautical miles away from uh, our intended to destination. Give them the information they would need to perform a critical maneuver uh, were they out of communication with mission control uh, for any reason. Uh, in this particular case, this would be the burn that would put them in the proper position uh, for re-entry uh, if at some point uh, prior to, to entry they had lost communications with mission control. We are, uh, uh, normal Alongside the Alaskan Peninsula, though, couldn't really tell. This is Apollo Control at 87 hours, 36 minutes. The uh, series of numbers passed up to the spacecraft uh, several minutes ago, as we were saying, related to the uh, pad information which the uh, crew would use in the event they were out of communications uh, with mission control because of some unforeseen failure. And uh, we're not well, able to the receive from pressure the pressure is sure Information <laughs> needed to do a final mid-course correction prior to uh, entry. In this case, uh, Lovell would be required to get the spacecraft in the proper attitude and perform uh, the final mid-course correction with numbers uh, supplied previously. And those numbers were just passed up uh, to him. Uh, the procedure for putting the spacecraft in the proper attitude would be to use the sun and the earth as reference points. Uh, and then once the spacecraft was in the proper attitude, he would uh, perform the maneuver uh, as indicated on the uh, entry interface minus eight hour pad, which we just uh, read up to him. 
This, of course, would be a backup procedure. The normal procedure would be to uh, use the onboard guidance equipment and numbers supplied prior to the burn uh, from the ground. And only in, in the event of some unforeseen communications failure would this uh, backup procedure be used. At the present time, Apollo 13 is 194,269 nautical miles from the Earth and traveling at a velocity of 3,771 feet per second. Coming up at 90 hours, 24 oh, minutes. A break in the clouds, seconds. though. The spacecraft will... Oh, there's some land over there. The That's the, the peninsula. At this point, in mission control will begin calculating the spacecraft altitudes and uh, velocities for trajectory purposes with respect to the Earth rather than with respect to the Moon. And we'll also at that point begin to see the velocity climb We're about as to the cross the, the, the sphere of influence no brown boundary. Uh, the trajectory displays would indicate the spacecraft slowing down under the uh, dominant effect of the lunar gravity. The height from the Earth up oh, cloud reset still good though 188067 nautical miles and the distance from the moon at that time would be 33821 nautical miles one other bit of information from the flight dynamics officer is that the midpoint in terms of distance uh, will occur at 119 hours 44 minutes 33 seconds at that point the spacecraft will be 110,000 730 nautical miles from Earth and from the Moon. At 87 hours, 39 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston.
him is uh, while you're maneuvering to that attitude, uh, using uh, eggs to control your yaw. If you find out in route to that attitude that uh, you didn't quite have the yaw where you wanted it to, B, uh, you can use your ACA and uh, tweak up the yaw and your eggs needles go right back to zero because you uh, zero the attitude. Fuel consumption should be all right. I'm not that far away. Scattered. High broken. Ten miles visibility. Seas will be five foot waves. Fifteen knots. And uh, you'll be going to Samoa by boat and or aircraft. to spend either a night on the boat or in Samoa. Return to Ellington by 1.41 on Saturday, the following day. I think he previously said all this to Fred Hayes, and now he's just repeating it to Jim Lovell here. 150 nautical miles away oh no, we're gonna do the whole bit. from our destination. So, they're getting a pay raise. A reminder that astronauts got regular military pay. As long as they were in the military, they got regular military pay. So, they weren't exactly paid a whole lot. He wants his time hack. Yep, they keep saying that the encoding is a little bit overloaded. Well, we're getting close to the end of the flight anyway. Got a little bit high here. That's alright actually.
Now let's see how we're doing. Ah, we can see the airport now. P A K N. That's our airport. A uh, hundred nautical miles away now. All right. Well, maybe we can turn those off and start descending. Not too quickly though. This is Apollo Control at 89 hours. Uh, a short while ago, just moments ago, you heard uh, a bit of music on the air to ground line uh, coming in over the noise. Uh, Jack Swigert, the capsule communicator, or rather uh, Jack Lousman, the capsule communicator, uh, checked with Jim Lovell and uh, Jim confirmed that the music was coming down from the spacecraft. At the present time, uh, the status aboard the spacecraft is that, uh, as far as best we can tell, is that uh, Lovell is the only one of the three, uh, three crewmen who is up and about. Uh, Jack Swigert uh, has been resting since about 82 hours ground elapsed time. And Fred Hayes uh, began his rest period at uh, 86 hours ground elapsed time. Uh, Lovell rested from about 82 hours until about 86 hours. Uh, when he changed positions with Fred Hayes uh, taking over the watch. At the present time, Apollo 13 is 191,187 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed with respect to Earth of uh, 3,804 feet per second. We expect to continue uh, having quite a bit of noise on the communication line, uh, communication circuit with the spacecraft, uh, partially due to the fact that the spacecraft uh, in its passive thermal control attitude is uh, deviating somewhat from this attitude and we do not have the uh, optimum position uh, on our antennas, uh, on the spacecraft on the antennas uh, for strongest reception. Uh, this situation corrects itself somewhat as the spacecraft continues to rotate at the rate of one revolution uh, every 11 minutes and periodically we get a combination of antenna positions on the spacecraft uh, with respect to the antennas on the ground that improves our communication situation. Uh, we do not intend to uh, attempt to modify okay. the spacecraft attitude with the primary guidance About system. About 30 or so nautical miles time. from the airport. The feeling is that the attitude we would get by trying to reestablish the passive thermal control mode manually would probably not be as good as the one we've got right now. So the plan is to live with the communications uh, problem and uh, to expect that we will have uh, periods during which uh, it will not be possible to get uh, usable communications because of the background noise. In mission control at this time, we are... Does not look like I've got photo scenery around over. here. A number of flight controllers have come in. Alas. The, uh, succeed, for the this is the stock ship. scenery. Uh, flight director Glenn Lunny and uh, his black uh, team of flight controllers 
will be replacing Flight Director Milton Wendler and the Maroon team. And that shift handover is scheduled to occur at about 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, or about 45 minutes from now. At 89 hours, three minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Some breaks. This is Apollo Control at 89 hours. Uh, a short while ago, just moments ago, you heard uh, a bit of music on the air to ground line uh, coming in over the noise. Uh, Jack Swigert, the capsule communicator, or rather uh, Jack Lausman, the capsule communicator, uh, checked with Jim Lovell, and uh, Jim confirmed that the music was coming down from the spacecraft. At the present time, uh, the status aboard the spacecraft is that, uh, as far as best we can tell, is that uh, Lovell is the only one of the Okay, crew we green, can definitely uh, see the runway there. Is up and about. Uh, Jack Swigert. Uh, has been resting since about 82 hours ground elapsed time and Fred and Hayes, uh, clouds are threatening that view <laughs> typical uh, Lovell rested from about 82 hours until about 86 hours uh, when he changed positions with Fred Hayes uh, taking over the watch so King Salmon Airport at the present time on the Knock Neck River is 191,187 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed with respect to Earth of uh, 3,804 feet per second. We expect to continue uh, having quite a bit of noise on the communication line, uh, communication circuit with the spacecraft, uh, partially due to the fact that the spacecraft uh, in its passive thermal control attitude is uh, deviating somewhat from this attitude and we do not have the uh, optimum position uh, on our antennas uh, on the spacecraft on the antennas uh, for strongest reception 
Now this situation corrects itself somewhat as the spacecraft continues to rotate at the rate of one revolution uh, every 11 okay. minutes and periodically Back we into the cockpit. get a combination of antenna positions on the spacecraft uh, with respect mm, to the antennas on the ground. That camera. It improves our communication situation. Uh, we do not intend to uh, attempt to modify the spacecraft attitude with the primary guidance system powered down at this time. The feeling is that the attitude we would get by trying to reestablish the passive thermal control mode manually would probably not be as good as the one we've got right now. So the plan is to... I think we already heard the this. There might be a repeated uh, tape. And, so again, uh, for those not familiar with we'll how the Apollo audios work, get, they uh, dump a whole bunch of different tapes onto a single file. In mission control the this file is usually about six hours long. The shift change, the and, and the tapes overlap somewhat. In, uh, Sometimes they... Uh, trim the tapes so that the they get rid of the overlap, sometimes they don't. Director Glenn and, uh, but uh, basically as one tape will be at mission control was about to run out, they'd start a new one the before team. the other tape and ran out. Hand over to schedule to occur oh. at about uh, 7 a.m. It shouldn't be in time. any danger, oh. Betty. Oh. Uh, you know what, let me just drop my landing gear, that should stop her from worrying so much. Yeah, okay. That's better, okay. Jim, uh, we got you scheduled for an eat e period about an hour ago, I suppose you're taking care of that. Uh, the other thing is, we're kind of interested in going to... Uh, uh, okay, maybe I misjudged our speeds, okay. Okay, a little bit of flaps then. Interesting. Uh, let's not go up so much. A little bit of flaps go a long way, apparently. Okay, let me lock my view. This is getting annoying, actually. She was trying to say to me there. Uh, uh, okay, I'm too high. Let me just check my exterior configuration. Oh, that looks okay. No big surprises there. Oops, I need to click. I don't know why I need to click to unfreeze it, but that's the thing now. Let me just trim out. Let's see. Got a sense of where I need to be here. Okay. Aquarius 
Houston, go ahead. That E bracket seems somewhat useless most of the time. I don't know. They're putting together the CO2 adaptation system to adapt the command module CO2 filters for the lunar module. Betty's trying to tell me here. Pull left? I'm not sure. Okay, a little bit better this time, though not perfect. Uh, okay, uh, misjudged a bit, a lot. Uh, okay, that's not great. Huh. I don't know. Something uh, felt a little bit weird. A lot weird. That was awkward. Maybe it's me and not the B1B after all. I don't know. Well, I don't know. This went all over the place right when I was trying to land it. We're here. It didn't blow up. But that was a weird as heck landing to me. Yeah. Well, anyway, maybe I just need more practice. Let me pause the audio there. Yep, that that was awkward as all heck. I mean, fighter planes I'm usually okay with. I mean, they're not that weird. But except for the MiG-21, but that was because it was a little bit too full. Anyway, yeah, not very happy with that landing, obviously. But here we are. We are at King Salmon in Alaska and next time we will move on to Anchorage and hopefully I'll do that a little bit better. That's not too long a flight, that's 250 nautical miles. So we'll pick up everything from there, from here, 
And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.